that in. There we are. See down here. Now the previous one, it was very wobbly, but this is much better. It's still a little bit of wobble there if I put pressure on it, but not too much. And hopefully you can see that, yeah, it's picked that up. Now I did do a strength test of the other one I did. Try to do a strength test of the air pressure. So, let me try it like that. I still honestly think there is a little bit of air, like pressure lost, as it's going through the tube. So this is just a Hoover extension tube which you can extend more okay i've got the server drawer put in behind this piece of cardboard this is just a sheet of cardboard fan on there this is not a fan it's well it's an opening but not a fan this is my server cabinet Some light on it, there you are. My 3D printing. So yes for a skirt on this. Now I have just tried doing a print of this and it started lifting. There's a five millimeter skirt by the way. It started lifting because the heat bed wasn't on. That's because I've just reinstalled Correct and I set the settings wrong. I've been careful there. For this part here, I'm starting to print now is like this top part of this Dyson DC-16 attachment so it's just the top part here I have already printed the tube part for the bottom now I printed these out separate because I, this had to go through an awful lot of iterations because there is a very slight you probably won't really tell but there's a very slight like taper on this going narrow at the bottom and the idea here is to acetone this to this part that's getting printed now now I do ask for a brim you might notice there's a brim on there that's because as you see this is like top heavy this I always try to do my designs that don't need supports if possible so that's why it's got this sort of taper on here that's going to the plug sort of unit I don't know how I'm going to wire that up if I can at all but the Dyson DC 16 animal does have a powered brush on it it's only a handheld low voltage thing it, can you see the wiper arm there that's what's making this knocking sound it's jumping so I'm going to have to check out the wiring of this wiper arm because I have all rewired everything in here just about right, this is about a three and a half hour print I think just let you watch it get started now as you see reflections here that's because it is in my big like server cabinet here I can open this door I can't open it too far because the camera's here well I could but I'd have to move the camera so you see like this server unit that I'm using as a 3D printer enclosure mainly I want to try there is a big like knockout 
plate at the top there. That can be knocked out. I want to get a couple of fans on there and filters on there, etc. to try and clean the fumes up. This is my moisture absorbent unit. Look at it. Well, that's just stuck on there with magnets. There's, uh, I think there's 10 small, very small neodymium magnets super glued to the back of that, and that uses uh, the magnets to sort of go onto the metal of the server cabinet. Now I can plug, I can take that off and dry it out by plugging it in the mains. That warms it up and dries it out. And there's a plate on the front there, little almost like window just get a shadow in the wrong place here like as, is, as is possibly can see there's a little like window in there that changes colour depending how damp the slight silicon gel inside now you can see the reflections on the glass in the of the server cabinet here This is my LCD 12864. I have to do something about this because the wires go down the side. Now this is on a sliding drawer. This, well there's a sliding, not a drawer, a shelf under here. A sliding shelf. I keep saying drawer. Really technically it's more of a shelf. I can slide forwards and backwards. That's got all my ramps on it. Just a piece of cardboard here. Fan on. Like a grill thing. Just a blank grill there. So I can slide that forward, but if I slide it forward, it means I have to remember to unplug this LCD 12864. So this is on an adjustable stand. And there. I'm going to have to sort out the server arm. I don't know what's causing that to go like it is, like jumping. You see how it's jumping there? And it's actually banging against the edge of the uh, printer here. Now, as far as I know, it's got a very, very good power supply, so I've got to assume that it's actually the connections in a way. This is my like moisture absorbent temperature gauge. Now, the moisture absorbent measurement on there is probably totally out because I've had to well I've been mucking about with it a lot it's just a guide talk about that here no batteries used there so I've got uh, Elmer's glue stick on this bed you may see a bit of blue there normally the blue see the reflection of the light there one of my lights there normally the blue disappears Sometimes the heat brings it back. This heat bed is on 65. The nozzle is on 225. E3D version 6. I've got a genuine E3D version 6 here. And one thing I've noticed about this genuine E3D version 6 as opposed to a clone. It's about 1mm shorter. So I had to readjust all the like Z4 height settings etc etc. You can usually tell a genuine E3D version 6 by the top up here. See, there's no like boarding fitting that sticks out there. That is normally on a clone type one. Does it print better? Well, it's okay. But I'm hoping it's going to last a lot longer than my clones. I've had a few clones and they last a while and then to start to go faulty basically okay enough waffling let's pause the video and I'll come back in about an hour well it's coming up to one hour five minutes in this print about a three and a half hour print I think it's going to be
hear that knocking. That's my servo arm. I'll just a second. Now why it wasn't knocking, or you mightn't have heard it knocking, I had this cloth over the edge of it. It's very hard to move the server arm actually when the power's on. But I think the gradual layer. Uh, movement of it is you shut this cloth off but you have these sort of clip pegs which I got from Poundland with some I think it was um, epoxy resin that's right so you might just make out the five millimeter brim round the bottom edge there that is Elmer's glue stick on that bed. The bed is set in 65. The nozzle E3D version 6. Uh, and anyway, I was saying the bed is set to 65. The nozzle is 225. E3D version 6. Genuine copy. Genuine E3D version 6. You can usually tell by if you look up here. The clones generally have a like a board and fitting actually attached to this, whereas this is actually built into the E3D version 6, which as I might have said, seemed to be about one millimetre shorter than the clones. So I'm hoping that that one will last a lot longer than a clone. I've had a few of that work, well, reasonably well, but seem to cause problems after a bit. Quite often clones will have uh, piece of PTFE tubing inside that can cause problems, wear out, get bent, get scorched, which mine did, uh, and things like that. Now the E3D version 6 I believe does have a little bit of PTFE, well uh, the tubing goes quite far down into the part, um, the boarding tubing that is, so I don't know. And you might notice the uh, info there. Let me try and show you that before I pause this camera if I can. I think, I think it's 30% of the info. Yeah, it's about 30% of Particularly on this like, front portion where this plug unit is. Lots of bit of a checker there. Okay, let's pause the video. I'm hoping that clip keeps that on there for now until I can sort out the wiring. I obviously don't want to stop the printing just for that. Printing's going okay. video. Well it's coming well it's two and a quarter hours and I might have said it was going to take three hours for this print but I got the time wrong for this file it's not even enough six hours for this print and this is only like half of this part this is the side that goes on the uh, cleaner side what I'm calling the cleaner side that actually connects to the hoover so it's this like top section here I'm putting out yeah it's coming up that way. You can see how it gets wider there and it's almost like two tubes. This is an earlier iteration. It, this sort of tube here that goes in the extension, the hoover extension didn't really fit all that well. And that's one reason I split it up into two halves, like a top half and a bottom half. I will put both online. This has been redesigned a bit. Why it's got that like mark on there. Um, not too bad to fit this one. It was a little bit wobbly if you look at my previous video. And uh, now the tube I've got. Just a second. So 
So as I say, those like two pole type things there, because it has two wires going to the brush head, well two connectors going to the brush head, because it is a powered brush head, low voltage, about 21 volts, something like that. And I'm hoping I will be able to somehow wire up something to do that, but I don't know how. Not totally, but I've put it in the design because, well, just for future, so to speak, see if I can do that. This server arm is still twitching. I've, as you've seen, I've clipped that piece of cloth around that stops it banging against the edge, which is very annoying. You see that the auto tramming is working there. See that the Z carriage is moving, so well, it's turning the threaded rods to move up and down to allow for leveling. Thanks to this BL touch there, great. A BL touch, you can see that I'm in bother because of the glass here, and that's pretty reflective. So, yeah, it works on reflective surfaces, etc. etc. Aluminium surfaces, whatever. Okay, I'm going to pause the camera again, probably another hour. We've gone two hours, 20 minutes now. A bit less than halfway, I think. Well, it's coming up to three hours, 10 minutes. You might notice uh, like a little bit of a line there, where we. And you might also see that there's something missing at the back of this printer. Yep, I had this. Just a second, I'll put up here for now this sort of security camera. Oops. Oh, and now it's falling down here. I had this security camera on a piece of cardboard. Can I? Almost like a cardboard shelf here. And on the back of this is some uh, carpet, double sided carpet adhesive tape. And that was stuck to the back and it's given way and it's fallen down and the camera actually got trapped behind the heat bed only just a small amount and that's caused it to sort of get knocked out of line here now the camera has fallen down even a bit more up there i'll have to move it because it's against the uh, the boarding shoe but it's very near the boarding shoe at the top there that's not too bad i don't think so 225 on the nozzle, 65 on the heat bed, no fan, ABS, 3 hours, 10 minutes near enough there, approximately halfway through. I don't think I can really move the camera much actually from where it is, just maybe slightly. Just hanging on the wires because there's no way to sort of stick it. Anyway this camera at the moment isn't working and I'm not sure because I do have it in the server cabinet here if the because it's Wi-Fi the server cabinet might be acting like a Faraday cage and Stopping any Wi-Fi signal getting to it. So here's the server cabinet, as you see. Just move this light, that's one of my lights there. Can move it there, it's so not too bad. It can reflect off a white wall. Yep, 
I'm just going to see if I can maybe move this slightly. Well, it's finished. The bed's had time to cool down. I can't really give you the exact time because the way I use my temperature thing, uh, I ask it to play a tune at about 32 degrees. It seems to do it at 33 for some reason. That's to tell me that it should be okay to remove from the bed and that resets the timer. Uh, comes off the bed quite easy. It's a bit dark. A filament across something there. So this is probably where that the camera oh it's probably there actually I think where the camera sort of fell down behind the the heat bed there. Yeah, a bit of a lump, a tiny bit of a lump there. So there's the two holes for like power if I can ever figure out where I've done it. This goes is to quite thick there to almost well well done to here. I'm quite surprised. Oh yeah, there's a brim on that. I <laughs> forgot about the brim, haven't I? So the brim comes off as you see there quite easy. I put the brim on there because it is like top heavy in a way when it's printed out like this. So I'm going to weld that onto there, just some acetone. I'll have to see how strong that is. I think it'll be pretty strong. I think as far as I understand it gives it almost a chemical bond. I'll clean this up a bit and we'll see how well it fits when I've done all that. But yeah, apart from that, where it's been knocked out of line a little bit, I think, there with the camera, we would have to expect that at the camera. Oops. This sort of security camera I had was stuck on the back with some, yeah, it was on this as a shelf like a piece of cardboard and this is just carpet tape, double sided adhesive carpet tape so I would not recommend using that for anything like this because it does stick but it just came off after a bit. The camera fell down behind the back down here somewhere and the bed must have just about knocked it, it just about cleared it a bit and that's caused this problem, slight problem in a way. I think that will be okay to like experiment with for size. I know the tube is okay because I've tried that in the Hoover extension tube. Well as you see this is a part I've just printed and I've well, this part here, I sort of welded it on here, just some acetone. What I did actually is drip the edge of a screwdriver into the lid of a bottle of acetone that had acetone in it, then ran it round here, the two edges, but I put a couple of drops on the edge first, held it together to hold it in place. Then with capillary action it's sort of gone between the seams, I hope, reasonably well. And I just kept putting more and more on, waiting a bit, put more and more on gradually to join that on there. And that's, I don't know actually how strong that is, but I think it's, well, it's strong enough to hold this Hoover pipe here, as you can see. So here's the Dyson DC-16 animal, as it's known as. I think it's called an animal because of the brush and show you that just now if I remember. Anyway I've got some bit of muck down here. Can we get that in? There we are. See down here. Now the previous one it was very wobbly but this is much better. It's still a little bit of wobble there if I've put pressure on it but not too much. Hopefully you can see that, yeah, it's picked that up. Now I did do a strength test of the other one I did. Tried to do a strength test of the air pressure. So, let me try it like that. Let's go. 
still honestly think there is a little bit of air like pressure lost as it's going through the tube so this is just a hoover extension tube which you can extend more and then you can reach down you can reach to the floor without actually having to bend down which you would do without this well these two sort of attachments now there is an update to this attachment as well that has a notch cut in it for the crevice tool the crevice tool does have this sort of like notch thing on it as I said the brush is that this is the brush unit this is actually powered it does have a little electric motor in it doesn't mention the voltage there so as I know the battery is 21 volts on these units let's have a look you can see that 21.6 I think that's suggesting I haven't done a test on it that seems to suggest it's low voltage the little electric motor in there that's what turns this brush in here and this brush has these two pins on it to power it this is very tight on here now these do have clips on for the original ones but uh, this has two pins sort of to connect that brush unit that's probably why it's called it animal because now that is powered off the electric motor to turn that with an electric motor inside here it's not powered off the air pressure some of our brushes are powered off air pressure but as you see you can see the length of that if I wanted to get down to the floor pardon me I'd have to really bend down to reach but now with this new extension sort of won't have to so that's what this is for I'm hoping to, I haven't figured out a way of doing this is get some pins or something and some wires pop that on there have the other end on the other side of the hoover you can pick up these hoover extension pipes on eBay I'll put the brush So there's a brush side in, only it's not powered, as I say at the moment, because you haven't figured out a way of powering it. So there's two pins can go there. Bit, bit, bit big that. But that seems to work, that seems to work very well. So I'll post the uh, links on the side. I'll, online I'll do I'll post like the model that has both of these as one piece and as two separate pieces so if you want to you can do them separately I mean stood up to that only a matter of time to see how strong this sort of weld of this just acetone 100% or 99.9% .9 whatever it is high strength acetone I never use diluted acetone I don't recommend that but that's uh, seems pretty strong on there. That's got a lot of weight on there, and it's it's not coming loose. I'm not putting a massive amount of force on it, but you see me moving about there, and it hasn't like broken off with that acetone weld on that. But anyway, I'll put the two halves, and like if you want to print it in one piece. Now I do recommend printing with a brim. What I would suggest you want to print with a brim because it is printed up. As you might have seen, like with this top part up over, that's because these might be actually different levels. Actually, they're not really those two, but there would be these like overhangs to after for the plug to have to sort out if it was printed up that way. You'd have to have supports on, and that would cause problems digging them out and tidying up. I think so. I printed up that way. As I say, a brim on to stabilise it because it's a bit top heavy that way. And this one would have to, this also has to be printed out well, because this does have the angle on 
to go inside here. As I say, there's, there's a different design of this, a little bit different here, and a notch for the crevice tool in the design that's online. So, yep, that's okay. So, these attachments go from that one. There is one problem I can maybe foreseen with this. This can turn. So, if you do have any wires, cables, or whatever, which I probably plan to use, uh, going down here, they could get possibly twisted. That's if you want the powered brush. Now, it does suck even without. The brush turn and see the brush won't turn. Can I show you this? Um, see the brush won't turn like that because there's no power going to it. So I might try and figure out some way of getting some power down for that. Yep, so there we are. There's a Dyson to Hoover pipe extension attachments there. I'll put a link on here to the SDL files.